Hello everyone, Ruby Retro Bay Tarot and Tea here, and today I'll be um, serving you guys up another tarot. Uh, this one I came across at a store here in town and did a little research because it kind of sucked me into a, that kind of a rabbit hole. Um, you'll kind of see why anyway. So uh, here is the tarot without further ado. It is, as you can see, a French tarot or French titled uh, called Le Tarot des Enfants de la Lune. So in English, uh, Tarot of the Moon's, the Moon's Children or the Moon Children, if it's not the Moon's actual children. But anyways, and it was created by Morgane Celeste. Uh, it is published by um, El Dorado Diffusion and ADA Group or ADA or ADA. I don't know which way it is. Sorry. Um, so El Dorado and ADA group, this is where the, um, rabbit hole kind of started. This, this is like what I first came across. So El Dorado and uh, ADA group is a publishing house that is, um, based in Quebec and other than tarot, uh, they publish books as well. Um, I, from what I saw on their website, it seemed to be mainly like thriller or like, crime horror book they might have like romance but when i looked quickly like that's what i mainly saw um i would say kids young adults young teens type of stuff that might be older too um and so the ada and el dorado they also have another branch of their publishing where they do tarot um and uh, some, uh, I guess, especially those in France or in Quebec, they might know one of, uh, a few of them, they might have seen them pass. Uh, one of them was, I believe, uh, Le Rac de Ferouz, if I remember the title properly. Hopefully I'm not mistaken. Um, that's one of them that they published. Um, and so, I don't know why I started looking at the publishing house, but I thought it was pretty cool that it was like, you know, a Canadian, uh, Quebec publishing house, um, and then I started looking up for this person, Morgan. Uh, but this is where I have like questions, <laughs> question marks and things like that. Uh, but you know what? I think maybe I'll leave all my questioning and all that for after. We'll just do the presentation and then my notes, I'll do it after the whole presentation, everything. So that you don't have to skip through the part that you want. So in any case. This is a uh, tarot, so it has 70 cards and a guide. At the back, you have a just a little preview of the cards, what they'll look like. Uh, it's this and this was what um, kind of had me tilting towards finally getting it. At first, I was half and half, but these two, I, I, I really like those two images. Um, if I translate really fast... Uh, so it says, embark for a mystical voyage with uh, the Tarot des Enfants de la Lune. So uh, Tarot of the moon ch Moon's Children or Moon Children, uh, where antique wisdom meets uh, celestial enchantment. Each card is an open door on the on introspection and discovery, illuminating uh, hidden hidden paths of uh, spirit and soul. Um, let the major arcana guide you uh, through the um, through the marking events of life, the big the big events of life, while the minor arcana uh, light up the uh, daily aspects of your earthly voyage. This exquisite tarot, and I like how they put tarot with a capital T. Anyways, this exquisite tarot invites you to, um, how can I explain this? To take a look in the, uh, uh, take a look at, into the uh, lunar mysteries, unveiling uh, universal truths in the uh, silver reflection of intempor intemporal wisdom. Hold the power of the moon between your hands and reveal the secrets that only the light of the night can uncover. Hopefully my Minute Express translation makes sense.
Okay, I'm, I'm doing this translating on the fly. I should already pre-apologize for this and I should also apologize. It's kind of hot in my in uh, the room. So I didn't fully close the door. I left, uh, not the door, the window. I left it a crack open just to have some airflow. But there are some neighbors and people in the streets a bit loud. So I already pre-apologize for that. So as you can see, it comes in this two-piece box with... A uh, little thumb imprint. It's pretty like straight. It's a pretty straight box. I'll say that. Um, here we have the book. A, a good size. We're we're not. You know what? It would be. It would be nice if Lu like imagine the Winning books, but smaller. And actually, it wouldn't be bad if the Winning books would be like a tad bit smaller, like this. Like Lou Willing could fit their their tarot in this, basically. Um, so here in the book, we'll look into it more, but, uh, we can already see a little bit what it looks like. There's nothing inside. So it's, it's a mass market pretty much. Uh, we have the deck inside of like an enclosure. What do we call this? An imprint. And this is plastic wrap. I did not know. I was not expecting that. So give me. Like point two sec. Where? Oh no, never mind. You know what? I can open it actually. Give me two point two seconds while I find my pokey poke, so I can open the plastic properly. And we can already kind of see that. No, oh, sorry. There, it was an extra. It was extra loud, so I paused. Anyways, so we can see taking off. The wrapper, the cards have a golden edge. And we're already having like half an issue here with the edging on this chunk. If the camera, it focused a little bit, but I think, you know, you, ah, there we go. See, it has a little bit of a, maybe it's application, but no big deal. And it kind of, broke apart into like little chunk but that's fine ooh, 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 ooh. let's not drop the cards out of order here are the back of the cards i do like the the the, the design at the back but this is obviously not something we can flip uh upside down so for those that like to have physical reversed cards physically or yeah anyways actual cards being upside down this will not be possible but i do like the design it's, uh, it's almost like a an old antique um map type of thing uh the the um cards themselves i don't believe there's any core to it but it is you know what i i am happy pleasantly surprised and and, and happy uh, that they don't feel flimsy. Uh, I would say below US game card stock, but usable. They, they do feel cardboardy. I will say that, but it's not like I, I don't. I don't feel like uh, they. They are. Um, I don't. I, they don't feel like the type of cardboard. Um, I don't know, like those. Um, those, those notebook covers or something like it's it's not flimsy it's not as flexible as us game cards but it's it's there it's good um and the reason why i was pleasantly surprised was because there was another deck that i thought about getting and i i was really close to getting it but lucky for me uh there was one deck that was open that you could look through the cards so i looked through the cards and the card quality for that one was definitely like thin paper and yeah it, i was like nope i know i'm not gonna use it or very seldomly because that's something that's easily bendable or anything like that but in any case we are talking about this one so what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in and we are going to um take a look at each card so we are starting with the fool you can see that it has it doesn't really have a border it kind of just has like a little i don't know a little decoration at the bottom with the name of the card uh, th yeah the name of the card and here we have uh, the fool here very I do like this and then the, ma 
magician. Oh, we're gonna have some cards stuck together because of the gilding. So here is the high priestess. If anything, I will already put the Empress as the best looking card out of this deck. The Emperor. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have some stuck together cards, so we'll, we'll, we will be careful while. Have the hierophant here. Let's see, the, on the, uh, they're writing the hierophant as in the in its feminine form. The lovers, very dreamy and wispy. The chariot. The hair or the face looks like uh, almost a uh, sculpture, like it's a picture of a sculpture. So if you do end up getting this deck, I will say be careful when going through the cards. We have strength here with a wolf definitely a nod to the moon card on the typical Rider Waite Smith when we have a dog and a wolf. So that's pretty cool. And there, uh, there might be a little print scuffle, but that's okay. The Hermit. I do wish it was a little bit lighter just so we could see the Hermit better, but I'm not hating it. That's pretty. That's pretty. Although we don't see none of the symbols uh, on the classic Rider Waite Smith, it's still very pretty. Here we have Justice. At first, I thought she was on a swing, and I was like, "Why is she on a swing on a trape on a trapeze? Trapez? Trapeze?" The little swingy thing in the circus anyways but the, <laughs> i noticed the skills there so it's okay it's not a swing also pretty hanged man but the guy is not hanged upside down so i don't know where he's hanged. i can barely see the i don't know maybe he's standing on the swing but it is very hard to see this definitely could have used a bit of lighting up. Because we cannot see none of the details. And then death. I mean, I'm looking through the, my, the camera lens and I'm looking like at my hand away from the, that, like not through the camera and yeah. No, I'm going through a few very dark cards. Although for death card, that's one I don't mind. Here, the, the angel or whatever looks giant. The devil. Again, the, the light issue, the contrast. It's pretty, but tower that's a pretty tower i like that tower gives me lord of the rings vibe but i don't mind it now we have the star that's also a pretty card the moon that we saw on the box cover Uh, 
sun. Maybe one of the brightest cards in that deck so far. Judgment. Should give like a vengeing angel vibes or something. And the world. Wow. Compared to all these cards, like I almost feel like I have to <laughs> squint my eyes a bit because the rest of the cards were much darker and this is so wow bright. Like this this that level brightness should have been applied to all the cards as much as possible. Because I know and, I, and now it, it almost feels like a relief to my eyes or something. Okay, now we are into the minor arcanas, starting with wands. Very interesting for the ace. Now we have two of wands. Gentleman is holding one stick. This was the second card. I was like, ah, give it a chance. Five of Wands. Interesting here. The Six of Wands. Seven of Wands. Here we can see some people. Looks like catching up to that guy. Eight of Wands. I like that card. It's like uh, meteorites. This one got lost somewhere, so bring it back to nine just for technicality's sake. And then the ten of wands, where he's just carrying a whole lot of sticks. Although it looks a little bit better when I don't look at it through the camera, so. Now we have the page. This is pretty. The night. The queen, oh, she's pretty. Again, it's like it looks like there's like a little gray haze or something in the front. I don't know. It's just a little bit clearer. Like, yeah, see, even this is a bit clearer. I don't know. It feels a little bit hazy there. But it's pretty. And then the King of Wands. Here is the ace. Very pretty. Now the two of cups. That's also pretty. Having some... Okay. 
is just a hands thing, but I'll get to it at the end. Here is the Three of Cups. Four of Cups. Typical right away Smith depiction. Yes, okay, four, five. Five of Cups. Here again, instead of having like three spilled and two upright here, actually, we even just have like four cups instead of five. I have a little bit of an issue, a little bit. Six of Cups. That's cute. Seven of Cups. The brightness thing I'm experiencing with these cars feel like what's going on outside right now. It's It was sunny, I think most of the day if I'm not mistaken, and I started filming and the clouds decided to come in and out and in and out and in and out because of course and I feel like this is what's reflecting with this deck some cards I, I, they do feel like pretty dark or even a little bit hazy I don't know what filter they have in front and then you have this that's just like wow. now the eight of cups like this is kind of a funny fish <laughs> like a dolphin fish like the night again dark i want to see the knight's face he's supposed to be the romantic kind of like guy no unless he's going for this this knight of cup is being all mysterious fine be mysterious Wait, the Queen of Cups. And then the King of Cups. He seems to be is he checking it like himself out or like his glass out. Some. He's feeling himself. That's all I'll say. All right, now we are with the swords and the um, Ace of Swords, which to me is kind of a similar style as the Ace of Wands, if I can find it real quick. Kind of similar. We can see it a little bit better. Oh, and I totally forgot to mention about the cards. They're not matte. They have. It feels like it has like this uh, this sort of gloss, but it's not. It's not. It's not glossy at all. Maybe it's like a matte finish, a smooth matte finish. The three of swords. I mean, I like, like, the background, the whole setup is fine, but I'm not feeling it for a Three of Swords. Four of Swords. If 
Five of Swords. Getting a little dark. I mean, I know it's like Children of the Moon, but it's always that dark for the moon. Ooh, I do like that one for the Six of Swords. That is very pretty. Now the Seven of Swords. You know what? I like that one. I'm not mad at that one. Eight of Swords. Frankly, because of how kind of scary I find this person is, it's all fine and dandy with me that it's trapped by the branches. It can stay there. Don't move. Don't move. And now the Nine of Swords. See, that guy is worried. I know exactly the story. That guy worried about Eight of Swords. That's the whole story. And the Ten of Swords. Ooh, that's a bit bloody. Wowie, wow. Now we have the page. Why are you looking so mad though? He is not happy and I don't know why. The night. Ooh, I like that queen. That is pretty. Is it me? Did all the queen have like a very bright white cream colored dress on? Probably should look at that. And then the king of swords. Who, funny enough, kind of has the position of the if you know the classic writer Lloyd Smith, the Queen of Sword, he's almost in that position. And now we have the pentacles here, they called it orbs, uh, so we'll call them orbs in English too. So, this is the ace of orbs that is very pretty. Two of orbs, also pretty. Three of Orbs. They're kind of looking like uh, light beings or ethereal beings or something. Four of Orbs. Again, I apologize for the neighbor neighboring, but if I close the window, I'm gonna be sweating like crazy. And I don't wanna uh, damage these cards in case uh, I do, I make a landmark uh, decision about this deck. So five of orbs. Six of orbs. Seven of orbs. Does look like he's waiting and getting tired of it. And then eight of orbs. Orbs. Nine of Orbs. Why are they looking like grapes here, though? And then after that, Ten of Orbs. Okay, I think we might have to wait out them teens. And it's quieter now. Anyways, back to the card Ten of Orbs. we have the page that's a cute kid I like it we have the knight if I can take these cards off they are, there we go the queen of orbs okay so maybe it's not that they're well they, this is pretty cream colored it's not necessarily white and the King of Orbs, which ha who 
has uh, like 80s hair, something like that. Okay, so we have done the flip through of the tarot of the children of the moon or of the moon children. Now, what I'm going to get into, and you may or may not have noticed, on the box and the book, it will say that it was uh, created by Morgan Celeste. Now, during my um, uh, rabbit hole searching, I've noticed that with uh, Ada Group slash El Dorado Diff uh, Diffusion, they will either name the creator or name the creator and the illustrator. In this case, they have not, they have named the creator. What will that, what is that going to tell you? That is going to tell you that, or at least that the conclusion, okay, fine. I, I'm not going to say it as if, as if it's facts because I was not able to, to find, to, to say 100%, but in my opinion, I will be, I will say between 85 and 95% certain that because there is only one person um, on the box, more likely than not, the, the creator was also the one that designed the images and or um, worked with someone who uh, is good at doing uh, AI computer generated images to do this deck and so therefore because the illustrator is a computer program it is therefore not credited in um the deck now even if i look here real quickly or actually you know what here when i'm looking here so the editor was thierry the illustration so there there goes uh, my confirmation so the illustrator was uh morgan celeste which is a person behind this deck um, and then the graphic design uh, which I'm guessing pertaining to the book uh, was another person Catherine and that also and which it, that also explains why because I've looked on the uh, on the the website of the the publishing house and it seems like the decks are coming out rather quickly ish I mean this one came out I believe in June um, Morgan has another deck that came out before that, I believe in May, if I'm not mistaken, April or May in that area. And there's another one, I believe, of hers that's coming out in August or September or something like that. So y'all can do the calculation and y'all can figure, like do your own research and figure out for yourself and then use that to make an informed uh, decision about your purchases. Or if you don't care, like, you know, it's just information, information, it's interesting, but it's not gonna change your mind either way or you don't care hey uh, all the more power to you but for those that do care about it i'm giving you all that i find and then you can you can make your own decision also because i have not seen hair nor hide of this Marianne celeste online i was trying to see uh any social media of of them um and i haven't found any other than like a tiktok account under that name but i don't believe it's that person because uh, uh that tiktok account did not have an e to Makan. so you know don't, don't start asking them questions i did not send you there uh so there that is my aside that is my rabbit hole that is what i think so personally i think i have reasons to believe that perhaps um just because of certain Things also during the images that I'm kind of, that are kind of like, eh, like wonky wonk. Um, sometimes, for example, the magician. Sometimes it was here. The position of the fingers here. It's a little bit odd, but not enough to like trip up my my brain. Um, and then also like, I don't know if I put them together. I don't know if. It's, we can see it but just with the contrast it seems like some like are, are very nicely bright like this one is like nicely bright nicely lighted nicely lighted this one very nicely lighted even this one with it's just like you know a main mainly red lights and darks but then you get two cards like 
you know even that one gets a pass because the person is like almost ivory white um but then yeah you get to like maybe the hermit where it's starting like it's starting to get there um which other part was it somewhere in the minors i think well the the hangman hard to see death i'll give it a pass the devil half a pass because i kind of get it you know it's the whole allure like the whole vibe of the devil uh where was it it was one of the minors anyways you would have seen like and then you have here like which is like super amazing bright like my, i almost feel like my eyes are like loving this this level of light and contrast and brightness and then other cards are just like i don't know maybe my brain is reflectively squinting or something maybe it's just my brain i don't know but there's that uh and so now like maybe i'll sh i'll shuffle it to shuffle say but i'll be careful i, I don't think i'll do a um a riffle shuffle because i think this is one of those decks that i will have to sit and think whether it will stay in my collection or will this be the first ever deck that i return to the store and y'all may you know start clutching your pearls and gas off see you now see if i just try to over to overhand this is not going to work well because it's already clumpy as a nature. Okay, fine. You know what? I will do a soft riffle shuffle. Like very softly. Maybe that will help. Okay, corner to corner maybe. Okay, corner to corner helps a bit more. I think because they were already clumpy when I took them out of the box to start with because of the gilding it has no rose petal finish but it still clings because i guess the gilding is kind of still sticking around let me try again without doing too much damage to the cards though already there was a little bit of issue with the gilding when it came out the box Okay, so you know, it's better. It's starting to get better. Once you break apart them little chunks. One last time. And it's also that I'm not like bending, bending them. Okay, so what we will do to check out the book the guidebook. Oh, I should have done that from the beginning. It's so much better when I do it this way. <sighs> okay, there you go. So much better. I should have done it the other side. Yeah. It's like it wants to go back in clumps. This is weird. Why does this like want to do that? It's the first time I see this happening. Okay. Okay, let's see. Here is our miner. And let's grab a major. So weird. Anyways, it's not too bad to shuffle, especially if you shuffle it the face outward. Because it already it already like had a tendency to bow this way. Okay, so let's see what you are. Oh, perfect. There you go. Exactly what I needed. Okay, so you know what? Because this is a full wall, read that one first because it's usually the first in the book. Um, okay, so now when you get to, to the uh, booklet, um, it has a nice table of contents. So basically, introduction, um, what goes on during a uh, reading, uh, kind uh, kinds of readings, uh, major, minor, and then each a page for each of the cards. Okay, and so here's the introduction. Let's see. I did not see in the table of contents if you're talking if they had any spreads. Um, 
Okay. So here they just give example of what you can do. So one card, three cards, Celtic cross, um, and then some uh, tips. So a clear intention, open mind, meditation. But we don't have an image of the spread. So it's just like, hey, you can do a one card, three card, Celtic spread. And that's it. That's all. Now, when we get to the cards themselves, we have a large color full page of the card. Name of the card and uh, let's see. Oh, it seems like one, two, three pages. Three pages. Quite interesting. And I see here also the last two pages there are some warnings about imprudence uh lack of seriousness distraction illusion and disconnection okay so you know what time it is y'all express translating woohoo <laughs> okay so um the car represented depicts the fool in a in an audacious dance with uh in balance between the tangible and intangible. On this image, the, the person, the character, is captured in full act of faith, walking on a tight rope between two trees, an exploit that requires concentration as well as self-confidence. Um, however, there is a surnatural, um, surnatural bent, um, beside or next to the to the rope a trajectory like a separated tra trajectory made of wind and energy and pure energy seems to be materializing itself illustrating an alternate pathway invisible to everyone's eyes except to the fool it himself um the elegance of his lavender blue outfit suggests a harmony with the night and nighttime environment, uh, while the full moon uh, on top or in the sky uh, bathes the scene of uh, in a light that transforms the ordinary in extraordinary. The uh, the calm of the calmness of his face or the calm of his expression. And the grace of his movements uh, reveal a, co uh, a confidence without limits in the invisible forces that upheld him. That, up that upheld him, uh, reminding us that our own voyage or adventure can be um, can be supported by a similar faith in the unseen. Reading all this, I. I appreciate highly that they explain the scene and now my just by reading this my mind is kind of changing again <laughs> but let's continue um, the night frame um, enriched by the mythic presence of the moon and the fog we'll say broom like little fog that are wrapping the faraway trees evokes the passage of the fool through the veil of reality where the laws of physics are softened and where the spirit is free to explore other dimensions of existence. This card is an invitation to recognize and follow our own uh, paths of energy and intuitions to accept the unknown and, and and to accept the unknown not as a um, void to fear, but as a space of possibility unlimited to embrace. Like unlimited possibilities to embrace. So here it says warning. So I'm guessing the warning, like I, I did a quick look. See, the warning maybe could be like if the fool is reverse or if we see it as a reverse. So uh, imprudence. Uh, the fool often walks towards uh, the unknown without fear, which can be an admirable quality, but that can also signify, uh, signify that he does not recognize the dangers in front of him. Uh, the warning here is to not act uh, in uh, with... Uh, is temerity, is there like temerity? Is that an English word? To not act 
in the without or with temerity or without caution or without paying attention to the possible consequences of our actions. Um, among this, which is lack of seriousness, uh, being like aloof, I guess. So the jovial need and insouciant. Dang it. Um, devil may care attitude of the fool can indicate a tendency to not take things seriously or ignore important responsibilities. The warning is to make sure that lightness and freedom of spirit does not lead to irresponsibility. Distraction. The fool is often absorbed by their own thoughts or visions, which can make him distracted. Um, uh, he can be distracted like within their their immediate environment that can be a reminder to stay um grounded and uh attentive illusions the path of energy and wind upon which the fool seems to be walking can also represent a path uh built on illusions and ir irrealistic desires the warning here is to uh, discern between faith and fantasy, between vision and illusion. And then deconnection. Disconnection? Disconnection. The capacity of the fool to float on an alternate path could suggest a disconnection of practical realities of life. It can be necessary to stay connected with the real world to not lose um foot to not like trip up i hope that i hope that makes sense did that make sense guys tell me in the comments please so okay all of this i like i very much like and again like my my now i'm like oh y'all know what i ain't mad at that uh now let's go with the cups Eight of Cups here. Oh, here we have a little change here. So again, full color picture. The difference here is with the Eight of Cups, we have some keywords. Uh, so searching, transition, abandoning or abandonment, depending, introspection, and uh, inner voyage. I feel like I'm being like extra fancy by, in, by saying inner voyage. Is there another word for voyage, like trip, inner, inner, inner searching? Anyways, please, again, tell me that. I feel like this is where my, my French is betraying me. And my English, too. So, here, let's see. The, oh, and here, it only has one page. So, we don't have the same thing as with... Uh, it seems, yeah. All the majors have the little warnings. And minors, we have keywords. But not the warnings here. So, what does it say here for the Eight of Cups? So, when the Eight of Cups turns up in a um, drawing, in a spread. Why am I losing my words? It speaks of a moment where it can be necessary to leave behind us something that was um, dear to us once upon a time. This is a kind of transition and change, but not an impuls impulsive change. Uh, instead of that, it's the kind of transition that comes after a profound introspection and realization. The card suggests that it might be time to let go of what the of what no longer serves us. Uh, uh, might it be? Oh, whether it be there, you go. Whether it be a relation, uh, like a relationship, uh, work, a house, or even um, old old uh, comport uh, no not comportment old ways of acting this is a decision that could be accompanied by sadness and melancholy but it is taken like the decision is taken with the understanding that the uh, um, that letting go or abandonment is necessary to grow and move on or move up the eight of cup can also talk of a search of a truth or of a, a more profound signification in life. You could feel called to um, go on a spiritual 
voyage <laughs> sorry guys on a spiritual pilgrimage to meditate or explore your your inner self of in a new way again i am much liking this description i can't i can't i'm kind of bummed that it does not depict like it doesn't ex it doesn't um describe or yeah describe the card like it did with the fool let me just look real quick with temperance yeah here it kind of explains a little bit here for example trans te uh, trend print. Blah, blah, blah. temperance is a person transforming water in ice uh yeah i i like you know oh oh your girls might be changing her opinion now oh 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 I was not I, I I was not expecting to be caught in a wares like this. Okay. 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 Anyways, <laughs> I mean, before I before I start thinking out loud, it's already been like, oh my gosh, almost an hour and I'm still here. Yabby dee yabby dee I mean. Anyways. Uh <laughs> this is the when when uh I have a certain tiredness in me. This is loopy tired. Anyways, the Taho des enfants de la Taho of the moon's children or children of the moon i have in i have a certain enough reason to believe that the art is ai it could also be that it's very well made digitally okay but this is my personal opinion someone you know the author itself could come by and be like no you're wrong silly person like you're being dumb dumb i did it myself okay fine uh that aside i am liking the art uh, a lot of them i'm liking a lot like for example here and here uh my only issues with some of the art like i mentioned ah, here that is a perfect example the two of sword it, it like i understand it's under the light like the light of the moon and that is why i'm not as annoyed as technically i should be about this because it is true you know, if you're in a forest, like you're outside of the city, the city lights, you go in the forest or somewhere it's dim, like not lighted by any sort of electric lights. It is hard to see under the moonlight, even when it's a full moon. And even worse, if it's a full moon and it's covered. So I get the concept and I get why some of the cards are dark and it's hard sometimes to distinguish the face or details or things like that. But my brain is still kind of annoyed that i can't see clearly <laughs> like i do want to see things clear. like here i want to see i don't know like the more of the close details but i get it you know i get it here again the judgment but i get it only this little like light oh no it's not even the it's not even the light it's the moon sorry i thought it was like a like an orb of light in the in the scepter but it's actually the moon that's kind of lighting this one i will say ah oh, i mean Give me three three swords give me three and that is that is one of the reasons why i'm you know things like that that i'm i'm saying i have reasons to believe that it could be computer generated like the heart could definitely be bigger but then again you know it's you could say you know it's it's a hard time like your heart feels all small and crinkled etc etc et fine dandy i'll accept it but uh, i would have liked that one it could have been more. It could have been more. It had potential. Okay. <laughs> Let's not hate too much. But otherwise, I am liking the images. The card stock, uh, if you do buy it, do be aware the gilding itself makes it kind of clumpy in chunks and section. Um, I did have to pull, be careful pulling it on. And also, like, you can still see it. I don't even know what card that is. But, like, when I took it out of the box, it had that little scribbish scribble uh, all up on the gilding not the end of the world i'm not gonna cry too much river about it um the guidebook ple you know what more than pleasantly surprised no he was i surprised it was extra surprised because i was not expecting it because i was kind of bummed out about some of the image and things like that and whatever else but the guidebook i think was the hail mary that might be the reason why this deck might end up still in my like i might keep it in my collection for the guidebook alone and how they explain the majors i wish but i wish they explained the 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 minors too that would have been cool and um i did like how they had like the warnings in the majors arcana 
it would have been nice. You know what? Maybe it would have been nice on the minor too, but I ain't hating it. I'm not hating it. Uh, this definitely would not be a... Okay, I say definitely would not be a learner's bike, but then again, everybody's way of learning is different. But I personally, if someone say, hey, I'm just starting out learning like right away Smith, I might not direct them to that. Um especially if they're going to take resources from like internet and other books and stuff like that because they're they're going to be hecka confused that's for sure but otherwise you know if you want something like moody um oh what's the name of that movie it just made me think of um that i've like never seen but i remember like seeing enough things of it something hollow creep no not creepy hollows dang it it's like the story of uh that headless guy oh uh, anyways please save me Right in the comments, something uh, the headless horseman. I'm pretty sure it's that story about the headless or horseman. It's something hollows, sleepy hollows, maybe sleepy hollows. Any case, listen, I'm I'm at 56 minutes, and it's getting it's getting cookie crazy. Or else, what else can I say? Again, uh, for the the time being, when I looked at their Instagram, they said that this was only available in Quebec for the moment, for the time being. Um, I will check when I upload this video whether you can like order in like from their um, uh, from their website if you can like order out of Canada, uh, and then I'll make a note of it. Anyways, I'll leave the link so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, and then um, if I find an Amazon link, I'll also po post that one because a lot of the time from Amazon, you can order what you need to order. Otherwise, if you're in France, for example, and you like to get it, um, probably, you know, within the next season, by fall or maybe start of, of winter, you'll, I'm, I'm sure it'll end up being there because a lot, some of their decks, I believe, already are in the French market. Uh, but other than that, this was... Le Tarot des Enfants de la Lune <laughs> by Morgan Celeste. Uh, hopefully you liked my flip through uh, and uh, my little observation and pauses. It's been an hour. I'm going to let you go, y'all. Oh, I did like the back of it. That's another thing. Um, let, please let me know. If you had any questions, put it in the comment section. Boom, boom, down below. And until next time. Bye-bye, guys.